Welcome to the Kearney Welcome Back webinar. A little bit about the webinar before we get started. All meeting attendees are muted during the duration of the meeting and your cameras will be turned off. To interact with the staff and administration, please ask questions through the chat and question and answer function. Spanish translation is also available. I'd like to introduce our interpreter, Ms. Josefina Riggins. I'd like to now introduce our principal, Ms. Anna Diaz. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Diaz Booz, and I'm the very proud principal at Kearney High School. I am so excited that we're finally at this stage where we can welcome students back to the campus. And I'm so looking forward to seeing all those smiling faces on the first day. With me today, I'm with our vice principals. Um, our vice principals will now introduce themselves. Hey everybody, my name is James McKillian. Uh, great to have you joining us tonight. And uh, we are just really thrilled to be um, opening school again on Monday. And we've been planning and preparing for that over the last couple of weeks. And it's going to be good. Good evening, everybody. Rob Mesa Eller, Vice Principal of Kearney DMV. And I am extremely excited that we will be reopening and having many students coming to uh, work with teachers face to face. We've been waiting for this day for a long time, and we're very glad that you're here to learn about the details of the reopening. Hi, everyone. I'm Shannon Garcia. Hola, I'm the administrator at Kearney School of Biomedical Science and Technology. Maestra. I, too, am very excited yo, to be yo back and excited to work with our students aquí. who will be back in person next y week. De a, a en persona. Before I proceed, if Ms. Riggins, can you go on mute? That way um, we won't hear the translation. I'm so sorry. I thought you had started the interpretation. So please excuse me. No, problem. but we need to have the interpretation begin. Yes, I'm but sorry, typically. Ms. Diaz. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Shane, can you go to the next slides? So today we're, we're going to be go over uh, some very, very important information. Our goal is to provide parents and students with clear and useful information on three very important to topics. We will be giving you details on hybrid learning and what that will look like at Kearney uh, during quarter four. And quarter four uh, starts on Monday, April 12th and ends on the last day of school, June 15th. We're also going to talk about what students can expect when they return in person to in-person learning. And we're going to talk about supports available to Kearney students during hybrid learning. So Kearney is following district, county, and state guidelines. Um, we have obviously uh, been doing that for quite a bit of, of time now, but I wanted to make sure that you know that we are very close contact, especially with um, the scientists through UCSD and making sure that we are really um, adhering to uh, safety guidelines. The campus has been certified ready to open by a San Diego Unified School District auditing team, and that is not um, anybody at our site. Uh, it's independently done by uh, uh, district staff that has come to our site and made sure that we are following um, very strict guidelines. Those include the following. Uh, limiting campus access to students and essential personnel only. So um, please know that we will be um, very, very secure in terms of keeping um, the gates locked and making sure that uh, access is very, very limited. We will be following social distancing um, guidelines and have reminders for path of travel and outside classrooms. Um, every day, uh, students and staff will have to take a daily clear has healthy survey, and that will be a requirement um, that we will be very strict about. 
There will be safe distancing in all shared spaces and within classrooms. Um, of course, masks will be on at all times. Um, there will be no eating or drinking indoors. We have um, heating and um, ventilation systems um, that are that have been um, certified, that have been you know checked. Um, we have um, we have been guided to um, open doors and and windows so that air is always circulating. And, and in addition, we will be wiping down services at the end of each class. So. Uh, rest assured that we are following all the uh, policies and procedures set forth uh, by the county and the state. In addition, um, we also have a custodial crew that will be on hand um, every day, all day, and that will be regularly cleaning the surfaces and the classrooms to ensure that um, everything's ready for the next day as students arrive. Next slide. Uh, Kearney's campus will be closed to visitors, um, of course, in order to maintain COVID safety. So we're asking that, um, including parents, that you do not visit the campus. Um, if there is a need and you need to call, contact us, um, I will provide that information at the very end of the webinar, because we know that it is very important for you to be able to communicate with us. Um, but, if, but as I'm sure you understand, we want to ma maintain safety at all times. And so we will be closed to visitors. Uh, our exterior gates will be locked during school hours. All staff have keys uh, to open door, uh, gates and doors in case of an emergency. So rest assured that everyone will still be able to exit if there is an emergency, but during the day and during instruction, um, the gates will be locked. Parents are strongly encouraged to communicate with school staff via email or phone. And again, we are discouraging anybody from coming to the main office. If it is an extreme case and an emergency, obviously um, we can accommodate that. But in, in most cases, we would expect that we would be able to um, serve your needs via email or phone. Any parent or teacher meetings will take place virtually. That includes IEP meetings, any meetings about uh, uh, your student's academic progress, et cetera. Parents dropping off and picking up students will not be permitted to access the campus during COVID protocols. So I know some of you are used to uh, sometimes even, you know, watching your children or wa walking across the street with them, but please, um, we're not allowing this at this time. We want to minimize the number of, of people that are not essential on a campus. So if you could please uh, drop your uh, student off at the, at the, you know, at, at the parking lot, um, most of our students do walk to school, but if if you in fact you drive your, your your student to school, please do not access the campus. As we again, we are trying to limit the number of people um, that we are um, engaging with, and we are obviously focusing on the students at this time. And now I'd just like to share with you a little bit of detail about the instructional model that we will be using at Kearney during quarter four, which is April 12th to June 15th. Um, our schedule is designed to maintain a safe number of students and adults in the classrooms at all times. Um, and for that reason, we've taken the um, group of students who will be coming back for hybrid learning and essentially divided them in half. So students whose last name begins with an A through L will be on the maroon team and students with last name M through Z will be silver team. And Monday and Tuesday, the maroon team students, last name A through L will be learning on campus at school. And students who are last name M through Z will be at home. That will flip on Wednesday and Thursday. The silver team, M through Z, will be at school, and the maroon team, A through L, will be at home. On Friday, all students will be learning from home. There will be a 30 minutes of live interaction with one of their teachers at 10 a.m., and the remainder of the day will be asynchronous, meaning that the teachers will post work for the students to do, but at their own pace throughout the day. This slide shows you what that schedule looks like, and it looks very much like the timing of our schedule from quarters one, two, and three. You'll see that period one is from, it's a two hour block from 8.50 to 10.50. Then there's a 10 minute passing period 
and then another two hour block from 11 to one. And then it shows that lunch is from 105 to 135. Um, we will talk about that in a few minutes. The students will not be eating lunch on campus. They'll be grabbing their lunch from carts as they're leaving the campus and then eating that lunch on their way home or when they get home. Uh, but we did include a lunch break in there. And then flex time is 1.35 to 3.35. And that's the time of the day where the teachers might hold office hours. There might be parent-teacher meetings. There might be tutoring sessions um, that teachers hold as well. And then you can see the one day on this schedule that's quite different is Friday. And that's where all students are at home. And you can see that at 10 a.m. there's a live Zoom check-in with one of their teachers for 30 minutes. We'll go to the next slide that has a summary of this. So just in summary, students who are doing hybrid learning will be on campus twice a week for in-person learning. If your student's last name is A through L, we'll see them at school on Monday and Tuesday, and they'll be learning from home Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If your student's last name is M through Z, we'll see them at school on Wednesday and Thursday, and they'll be learning from home the other three days of the week. Next slide. So one of the biggest questions that students and parents have is, what should I expect when I go back to school? And our ASB teacher, Ms. Murray, partnered with one of our juniors, um, Kara, to put together just a three minute video to illustrate what a day in the life of a student who's doing hybrid learning at Kearney will look like. And hopefully this video will illustrate for you and answer many of those questions. Let's check it out. What's up Kearney Comets? My name is Kara and I'm your ASP secretary. We're so glad that schools will be reopening for students soon, and we wanted to share with you some important details about what to expect if you return in person. Every day when you arrive on campus, complete the ClearPass survey on your phone or on your laptop. Always remember to bring your mask and your small school lanyard. You'll want to get to school between 8.20 and 8.30. When you arrive, you will go to your small school gate for check-in. Don't have a lanyard yet? Don't worry, you'll get one on your first day of school. School staff will check your clear pass, lanyard, and your mask. There will be signs and arrows reminding you where to go when you are on campus. If you want breakfast, head to the back of the campus by the upper field. Remember to always stay socially distanced from others. You can eat it on the upper field or save it to eat at the break between classes. By 8.45, you'll walk to your class. If you're a few minutes early, just stay distance outside of the classroom. Your teacher will greet you at the door before you enter class. In your class, your chair will be located a safe distance from other students. Some classrooms may have barriers at your table. Students will be learning in the classroom and online at the same time. Everyone in the class will keep their mask on for safety at all times. If you are not feeling well, your teacher will send you to our school nurse's wellness tent. You will have a 10 minute break between classes. During the break, you can eat your breakfast or a snack outside. Just stay a safe distance from others. After the break, you will meet with your second class of the day. If you need a bathroom break, you will see the number of students allowed posted outside the door. When the final bell rings at 1 o'clock, all students will head for the front gates to exit the campus. On your way out, you can get a grab-and-go lunch from one of the carts. However you get home, please make sure that you stay safe. I'm excited to see you on campus soon. We are going to stay safe, keep it positive, and make the most out of every day at school. See you soon, and go Comets! So as we begin to think about preparing for our on-campus school days, a couple of things that 
you definitely want to remember the night before, especially, is just making sure that your laptop is fully charged, uh, that your face mask and your lanyard uh, are in your backpack or in a place where you know that they'll be with you when you get to campus. Um, lanyards will be distributed on the first day um, that the student comes to campus, so that's when they'll be receiving their new lanyard for this school year. Um, set your alarm, make sure you get plenty of rest, all of those things that are just so important to being successful in school. On the morning of, make sure that uh, your student, and I know we have students joining with us tonight and are in the webinar, just make sure that you've completed your clear pass uh, on your phone or your laptop, and uh, that your laptop and your charger is in your backpack. Um, you're encouraged to bring a water bottle, and um, if you're not going to be uh, utilizing the school uh, breakfast or lunch, you could bring your own food and snacks if you choose. And yeah, just give yourself plenty of time um, to get to campus um, before the bell rings. Our daily student check-in protocols, um, as we've mentioned, include making sure that the Clear Pass Healthy Survey um, is done and um, there will be an entry point for each small school where we'll be checking to ensure that um, that has been completed. And that can be completed before you leave home um, or when you get to campus, there's a QR code. It looks like that little square on the right side of the slide there um, that the student can scan with their phone and they can complete. It's like a six or seven question survey um, indicating that they uh, have passed the healthy um, requirements to enter campus. And uh, each small school, as I mentioned, will have a specific gate that they'll be entering into the campus so that we can have um, not one or two entry points where everyone's entering in. We wanna spread that out and be able to keep um, good safe distance uh, between our students. And so at the DMD, they'll be entering through the auditorium gate for students attending BST, it'll be through the center gate just to the left side of the main office. The School of College Connections will be entering in through the 500 building gate and the School of Engineering, Innovation and Design will be entering in through the 300 building gate and the 1000 building gate if you have classes in the 1000 building. <clears throat> You'll see signs posted um, at the appropriate gate where students would enter in according to the small school that they attend. And uh, so you'll just kind of see that slide picture there of some flags of the different schools. And then the next slide, please. Signage will be um, again posted so that students are guided to enter into the proper gate and um, we will have staff um, sitting at those gate areas to check that students have completed the clear pass so that they're able to uh, enter onto campus where they'll get their lanyard. And then we will have student ambassadors um, around the campus um, really there to point our um, ninth graders who some have never been on Kearney's campus um, just to the, to the direction of the building where they have um, their actual live physical class. So there should be plenty of students around to point students in the right direction so that they get to class and uh, find where they need to be. All right, hi everybody. Thank you, Mr. McCallion. So when you arrive to school, uh, make sure that um, you as the student or parents, you make sure your students are wearing their mask over their mouth and their nose at all times. Um, if you are a 10th, 11th, or 12th grader returning student from uh, Kearney, you should already have a lanyard. If you don't, please do not worry. We will have them ready um, for you and freshmen on the first day of school at the gates where you come in. And um, as M Mr. McCallion mentioned, they will be clearly marked so you'll know which way to enter into the school. The gates will open at 820. And at that time, we will have staff um, there checking that we've got the mask on, the lanyard on, and the clear pass has been completed. Um, all students can get a meal from the carts. They will be set up at the back of the campus and students can eat at the upper field before class or they can hang on to it and eat um, outside during the passing period. It is a short passing period, but 
um, it is there for you um, so you can actually eat in that short break. And then um, first thing in the morning, you're going to want to get to your classroom by 8.45. Um, all the classrooms do have big blue X's marked outside of them, and your teacher will um, check you in, greet you at the door, um, and bring you into the classroom at that time. The first class will begin at 8.50. After they bring in all the students, they will then um, start letting students in through the Zoom because they will be teaching simultaneously the kiddos in the classroom as well as those that have decided to stay and learn from home. Um, teachers will maintain social distancing in the classroom. So um, that has all been planned for and will be maintained for safety. And we do have restroom and water fountain protocols with students during the first week of class. So we will go through those protocols with students when they arrive. This is a picture of our modified water fountains. So we wanna make sure that, um, again, we're maintaining safety for our students. So please get yourself um, a cheap, you know, you can pick them up, grocery outlet, Walmart, pretty cheap refillable water bottles. And you can use those to refill throughout the day. These new modified water fountains are throughout campus. So please bring a water bottle students. Um, you won't be able to drink directly from water fountains anymore, but you can refill your water bottles. So this is, this is new for us this year. Okay, and then uh, check out protocols. At one o'clock, the bell will ring. That will be the end of class. Students will immediately exit the campus through one of the four gates that they entered. They can grab a uh, grab and go lunch on their way out. And if they take the bus, they do have to be on the bus by 1.10. Um, at this time, students cannot stay on campus for in-person clubs, tutoring, other activities. They can do tutoring um, after school on Zoom, but just not in person at this time. Student athletes who do have a game or practice in the afternoon can stay in a study hall, um, but they cannot leave campus and return. There's not going to be any ins and outs. So I'm sure you have many, many questions, and I think we uh, did a decent job of thinking about um, what you would be wondering about. The first question is, do students need to get COVID test in order to attend school? And the answer is no, students aren't tested except those who play sports, um, and, and that's certain sports in season. Staff members, all staff members must be tested every two weeks. And so, um, if a student's not playing any sports, they do not have to get tested. What if my student shows symptoms of illness at school? Well, students who develop symptoms at school will be sent to the wellness tent for evaluation. It is an outdoor wellness tent. Parents will be called and students will, be, will then need to be picked up. If there is any doubt about your student's health in the morning, please do not send them to school. Uh, please keep them home. Um, but again, if they do fall ill, we will have an appropriate space for them to wait uh, while you come to pick them up. Also, can students take a mass break while on campus? The answer, of course, is no. Uh, students uh, must keep their mask on for the entire time that they're on campus. Obviously, the only exception would be when they are eating in an outdoor location. So there will be no eating indoors or drinking indoors, but they can take um, their masks down while they are distanced from others and, and having their um, lunch uh, or their snack or anything they bring from home um, because you will have time in the morning, a break during the two periods, and then obviously as they're leaving campus after the last period. One of the questions that um, you might be wondering is, do students need to bring books to school? And um, in general, most teachers are having students use electronic resources because we're trying to limit the number of books and materials being checked in and out of the library. However, there are some students who have textbooks or maybe a novel for their English class or perhaps a journal that they do some of their writing in. Um, in all of these cases, students will consult with their teachers about whether books or other resources are required. The one big reminder is that since all of this is taking place online and most resources are electronic, laptops and chargers are always a necessity. Um, there's a small percentage of students who um, receive transportation through the district. 
Um, and one question parents often have is, well, what happens if a school bus arrives late? Um, whenever that happens, the transportation department will notify Kearney at our main office, let us know, hey, the bus is gonna be 10 minutes late or 12 minutes late. Um, we will be ready. We will greet students when the bus arrives. We'll make sure they have the opportunity to get their breakfast and a little bit of time to eat it. Um, and then we'll get them to class. Um, another question is whether there are late activity buses this, at this time. And those are buses that are specifically for student athletes um, in, you know, who stick around to participate in an extracurricular activity. And our understanding is at this time is that there are, there are not any late activity buses. If that changes or if we are notified by the transportation department that there will be for student athletes, um, we will definitely um, let those families know. And then um, there have been some calls that we've received about whether there'll be a Taft shuttle bus this year. And that was like kind of a unique um, arrangement with the transportation department where we had a bus in the last couple of years that would take students to and from Taft Middle School to Kearney and then back and drop them back off in the Taft neighborhood. Um, unfortunately, at this point this year, due to the pandemic, there is no bus uh, to and from the Taft neighborhood at this time. James, you're muted. Sorry about that. So if your student arrives late to school and it's something that's not related to a late school bus, um, we will have a 15 minute grace period. And then following that, um, the school gates will be locked. So um, if you know that your student is uh, going to be later than 15 minutes, um, we do encourage you just to have them stay home and to access their learning online for the day. And then can uh, a student change from hybrid to online only? And the answer to that is yes. Um, parents can choose to switch their student to online uh, by contacting uh, the small school attendance clerk. Um, however, once you've been switched to online only, uh, the student is not gonna be permitted to switch back to hybrid. So that would be a decision that needs to be um, you know, thought through carefully uh, because it would be a final decision. I'll go ahead and take these questions. Um, so uh, what if my student has a Mesa College class first or fourth period? So option one, the student can arrive uh, or leave at 1050 via the bike rack gate uh, by the main office. Option two, the student can use their Mesa period to study on campus at the covered patio by the cafeteria. Uh, and that would be of course one student per table only. And then what if, my, what if I have to get my student due to an emergency appointment? Um, appointments, please consider having your students stay at home and learn online if you know that they have an appointment that day. And if it's an emergency, uh, please contact your small school attendance clerk and we will send your student to the front office gate uh, to meet you at your car. And then just um, one question that some folks have been asking via email or calling is, what's going on with sports um, during this time? And the answer is that sports have really opened up and begun in the last few weeks. Kearney currently has 16 different sports teams that are practicing and competing. San Diego Unified School District um, allows a small number of pre-approved family members to attend um, outdoor sporting events. Um, and currently, if that sport is an indoor sporting event, the school district does not allow any fans or observers to be present. Obviously, as things change, that may change, but that's the current guidance that we have been given. Um, the deadline for students to participate in spring sports has passed in terms of signing up and joining a team, but there will be information 
regarding fall sports that will be shared later in the spring and the summer. And we've included the um, Kearney Comet Sports at kearneycomets.com where you can go to learn more about our sports programs. And we just wanna make sure that we reiterate some of our key um, beliefs about student support and our commitments to you. Our goal is that we will support students to get the most out of their learning, whatever that format is. And currently um, that is hybrid learning. We will communicate as regularly as possible as we can with you um, through a variety of methods. Um, sometimes that's email, sometimes that's the Remind app, sometimes it's the school messenger where you'll, you'll get an email and phone call from Principal Diaz or from one of the other administrators. Um, there's obviously a lot that is new for everybody in this season, so we want to be able to work creatively with you and with students to solve problems um, and point you to the resources that you need. Our teachers at Kearney are so dedicated and they really want to make uh, learning as interactive and relevant as possible, regardless of the format. They are just really excited about this next phase to continue building relationships with students. And our ultimate goal is to make it rigorous um, so that students are developing the skills and mindsets to prepare them both for college and for career. One way that you can um, benefit from this time is that because things have gone so technological, um, there are now many new avenues that have opened up for families and students when it comes to communication. And some of those are the ones that I just described, like the school messenger, Principal Diaz's regular updates. Um, you may get personal phone calls or emails from teachers. One of the things that's new for us this year is that our students now have a Google account and we can um, send them emails directly. And most teachers now have some applications like the Remind app where it's basically like your student will receive a text message that reminds them of an important project or event or upcoming presentation. Um, we also wanna point out that Parents and students can find a lot of information on our Kearney Complex website, the small school websites, and as well as the teachers' Google Classrooms and Canvas. Um, and all of those are linked on this, um, this presentation. So when you receive a copy of the presentation, you'll be able to link and go directly to those sites. Um, Part of the ongoing learning is that we've built flex time into the afternoon. And so that's the time where many of our teachers will offer extensive tutoring and office hour opportunities. Some teachers choose to also or choose otherwise to offer um, before 8.50 and after 3.30 um, tutoring opportunities. The vast majority of Kearney teachers also will tutor by appointment with students if a particular day or time doesn't necessarily work for your student. And teachers will share their specific quarter four tutoring information with your student through Google uh, Classroom and Canvas. And then we'll be updating if there's any changes and then publishing that so that all the parents can see the tutoring times for all of the teachers. Just a quick reminder that PowerSchool is an incredible tool for you as a parent to be able to stay up to date. Um, you can often see grades and scores and see what's happening in a class through the Google Classroom or Canvas, but PowerSchool is sort of the ultimate way that you can keep up with grades and attendance. For the, the hopefully few of you who are not already connected with your PowerSchool parent portal, information. We've included contact information for each small school so you know who you can reach out to via phone or email in case you need to get your PowerSchool parent portal information. And, and I think Principal Diaz will share these details. Yes, I'm here. Um, so um, I think you've seen the slide before, but we want to make sure that you know who to contact and when. Um, please make note of the, this contact information. It is also listed in our handbook that you will be getting soon for the in-person learning and on our websites. 
and, and again, we will be we are recording this session and we'll be posting a link. So in case you need to refresh, you can go through these slides again and look up this information. Next slide. Really, the best way to contact um, somebody at Kearney is through your small school office. And for most things, you would contact the attendance clerks, and those, those folks are listed right at the top there. But if you need a counselor or an administrator, please, uh, please make note of these um, contact, this contact information because we are uh, available to help answer your questions. Um, email continues to be the best, obviously, because we are always carrying our phones and always carrying our, our laptops. Um, so if you could please, um, if possible, contact us via email, that would be very helpful. But now, um, so you know, everyone is back in person to the job site and uh, we are answering phones, but please note that sometimes um, clerks, for example, can be on a lot, another call and so they won't pick up your, uh, your um, call and it might be just faster to email them. Next slide. We have many ways for you to follow us on social media, um, and these are just a few. Most of the information that is um, urgent would be on our Kearney website, and um, that is a very, very important website for you to bookmark. So it is listed there for your um, information, and hopefully you already have that somewhere um, tucked away or bookmarked on your computers because we will be posting information there. Um, next slide. That leaves us with the ability at this end to take more questions. We are so thankful for your attendance. And again, we're so looking forward to seeing your students. We have missed them very much and we're so excited. Um, but I realize that you may still have many, many questions. So we will be going through the questions and making sure that we answer as many of them as possible. Rob, will you be facilitating that? Sure, so I see a question um, in the Q&A, are gator masks allowed? Um, so instead of like a typical like medical mask, um, the gators are almost like a fabric that you can pull over and they're larger than a mask. Um, and the answer is yes, um, gator masks are allowed. We just need to make sure that it's a mask that is of a thick enough material that it's able to protect you and others. It needs to be able to put, be pulled um, over your nose and your mouth at the same time. Um, so if a gator is more comfortable for you, um, that is um, definitely permissible. I don't see additional questions in the Q&A, but I'm gonna check the chat to see if we missed anything. We've got one from Francisca. How do you fill the daily check-in on your computer and share it once you arrive? Yeah, so um, if you don't have a cell phone with you and you choose to use your computer, um, it'll still take you to a screen that shows basically a green background with a check mark and it shows the date. Um, so you can either open up your laptop and show that to your administrator as you're coming through the gate. There is also a way that you can um, have that uh, certificate for the day sent to your email and you can show it that way. Um, but typically you would just open up your laptop, show it, the administrator will take a look and check the date and then you should be good to go. Okay, that was uh, in the chat. I don't see any other questions that we haven't answered. So we'll wait a little bit to, to see if anybody wants mm -hmm. to add one or two. So I see a question, um, how will the new students know where to go for each of their classes? Great question. Um, and it's the same question that students are usually dealing with in August or the first week of September, just that kind of, you know, where do I go and how do I get there? Um, so we will be sending out a scan of a Kearney map um, later this week and definitely by this weekend so that you and your student will have that, so you can kind of preview some of that. I know that um, some of my ninth grade teachers, for example, at DMD, spent time today filming the path of travel 
and how to get from every single classroom to the other classrooms in the ninth grade. They are gonna be posting that and sharing it directly with students over the next couple of days. Um, on the day that um, your student arrives, we will also be having maps available, hard copies of those maps for them to pick up if they're comfortable with that. We will also have older students um, both greeting at the gates as well as fanned out across the campus. They'll be holding up signs with things like, ask me or I'm here to help. And if your student has a question, they can simply ask, hey, how do I get to room 957? Or how do I get to the science room? And those older students are our ambassadors and they'll be able to guide students who are new to the campus. Okay, the other question we have is if my student does clear pass for on campus in the morning, will that work for clearing for sports that day? Yes, if they do clear pass once, then it is valid for the whole day. They probably will still have to show that little green certificate um, on their phone to their coach um, before they begin with their athletics, but it is once per day. Okay. Is there only one location for breakfast? EID is a longer distance from the one location mentioned. So there's gonna be two breakfast carts. They're gonna be located at the back end of campus. One of them will be around the 700 building, um, basically on the north end of the upper field. The other one will be in front of the 300 building, which is essentially right on the border between um, SCC and EID. Neither of them are particularly a far walk um, for any students in any of the small schools. Um, and then on the way out, there'll be three different carts for the grab and go lunches, one by the auditorium, one by the 500 building and one by EID. So I think students will find it pretty easy to access them. Okay. Um, we have a question just to confirm if my daughter has school on Monday and Tuesday, and if she gets late, but logs in from home, she won't be marked as absent for not assisting for not attending in person that day. That is absolutely correct. So if your student, um, for whatever reason, they wake up and they're not feeling well, or it's just a tough morning and transportation, you know, it's just hard to get out the door and you realize, man, we're going to be 40 minutes late, we're going to be at, you know, even 25 minutes late, you can opt that day to do online learning and your student will be marked present um, for doing that learning online and for completing the work online. A question in the chat, if a child is not feeling well, could they attend online school? What's the procedure if our child is not feeling well? Uh, Ms. Diaz, do you want to handle that one? Yes, it's very, very, very important that that uh, student stays home. Uh, and, and again, it depends on how ill the student is. If the, the student is still able to do the online learning, then really there's not much that needs to be done. However, if the student is so sick they cannot you know, uh, do their online learning that day, please just notify the attendance clerk for your small school and they will be marked ill. Um, but again, please do not send them to school in person if they're not feeling well. And the question is, will hand sanitizer areas be provided or do they need to bring their own? All of the classrooms have hand sanitizer stations. And so students do not need to bring their own, but they are welcome to bring their own if they'd like. Okay. How do you get the clear pass on the phone? So you take, we have these QR codes and you use your camera feature on your phone to take a picture of the um, QR code and it takes you to a link. And thank you. If students have to stay on campus for sports, Will girls be permitted to change into uniforms or practice clothes since they are not dress code compliant? That is a great question. So just following the procedures for the restrooms, uh, students can change in there for their sporting activities at the end of class, uh, but they would need to follow the directions on each of the bathrooms for the maximum capacity per, per bathroom. Okay, what happens if one student or more tests positive for COVID? So if that happens, you would receive notification from the nurse and then we have to um, follow the, uh, the protocols for quarantine. And it again, it just depends on the groups of students and teachers that um, were exposed and for how long. 
And so there's just so many scenarios, but again, that would uh, information immediately would go to the nurse and then the nurse would take over from there. Okay, I'm jumping back to the Q&A. Will we be notified of any new COVID cases? I believe there is a, a, a protocol for that. Um, that is an excellent question. Um, and one that I will post specifically to our nurse, I would assume that there'd have to be some type of public notification, similar to what happens with uh, whooping cough, for example, but I don't want to misspeak. And so I, that's something I will definitely look into and uh, send out in an email to everyone. Okay. What is the longest a student is permitted to stay on campus? Um, the student's only permitted to stay on campus at this time if they're participating in a sport. Um, and it would be when their sport is over. Okay. Will the clear pass be sent through the school email? Yeah, so I think it's a really good idea. The clear, we can send the URL directly to all students who are signed up for hybrid learning. And we can also send it home in one of our school messenger call outs for parents. Um, that way you can have it on your phone and have it on your laptop before you even get to campus. The QR code is really just there as a convenience in case you don't already have it. So great idea, we'll send that out when we send the map um, later this week. Okay, I heard there will be a new late work policy. Will you say what that is? Um, well, we haven't finalized any of the new policies, but whatever it is, we will be sending that out over the weekend. Um, and it would be um, aligned with the uh, union and the district guidelines. Okay. What is the schedule for students that presently have only one class? So it would be the same. They would just attend in person on the days that they are assigned and for just that one class. Okay, is COVID testing being offered on campus for students? It is currently being offered for our athletes um, and we can inquire it, um, if there is anybody else that's not an athlete that wants to be tested. Um, there is a pretty extensive process to sign up and to make an appointment, um, but we can certainly find out if it's open to other students as well. Okay, how, does stu how do students get onto campus for sports? on non-campus hybrid days? So it would be the same way they've been getting on campus now. Um, they're usually greeted by their, their coach and every coach does it a little bit differently, but it would not change. Okay, got it. Now back to the chat, we have, um, will the whole class have to quarantine if uh, someone was exposed? I would assume so, yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got that one. What is temperature, what temperature is considered a fever? Um, 100. Well, I understand it's usually over 100. Yes. Once students are able to get vaccinated, will those vaccines be available at school? We do not know that at this time. I have not heard that at all. Okay. My parents are asking how they can be a part of email notifications that are sent out regarding changes and updates uh, with the school, such as this Zoom meeting. So the way that it works is we can only send information out if you give us a contact, um, either email, um, phone number. And I know that, um, seems a little bit crazy, but we have a database. And when you enroll, you provide us with the email and the phone numbers that you would like us to contact you through. And once we do that, our, our program, our auto dialer goes through that program and picks up the um, email addresses and phone numbers that are on file. So if you are not getting notifications, you need to contact the small school office and notify the clerk. Um, and ask them to add a, uh, an email address or a phone number. And, and, and of course, if you change that information, please make sure we get that updated information because if we don't, 
then the old numbers and the old email addresses are getting the information, but we would we would know automatically to change that information unless you let us know. Okay, where can a student wait until the gates open? I need to drop off my student at 7.50 a.m. There is um, ample space in the front of the school, as long as they're you know, separated by six feet. Um, we're not encouraging students to be dropped off early. That's not unreasonably early, um, but there will, I suspect there won't be that many students out at that time. So there should be plenty of space out at the front of the school. Please note that administration is not supervising until eight o'clock, however. Okay. No questions. Here's one. Any ideas if next school year will be more back to normal? I certainly hope so, but unfortunately, that would depend on so many factors. Um, and ultimately, we do not make decisions at the site. Those decisions are made at the district level. And if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to district staff, your board members, um, because again, we do not make those decisions at the site. Okay. No questions. There's one. So are kids able to gather in groups to talk in between classes? That is a really great question. They are absolutely able to do that, but they must maintain the six feet distance. And that is super important. Um, I know it's difficult. I have two, well, I have a 20 year old son and a 17 year old son. And I know what it's like to wanna to interact with your friends. And I see that when they're interacting with their friends, but it's just really, really important that as you are engaging with your friends or engaging with anybody really that you are maintaining that distance. And I know it's hard because you probably haven't seen each other for a while or it's so excited to be at school, but at the end of the day, we have to maintain that safety. And so um, keeping, the, keeping the masks on at all times and maintaining that six foot distance is really very important. Okay, um, if some sports practices are held before school, is that going to change to after school? The, the problem at this point is that normally we have 17 sports that are spread out across nine months. And now we have 16 sports that are packed into about six weeks. And so access to the gymnasium is tighter than it's ever been. So even though we are now coming back for hybrid learning, my understanding is there's no plan to change the practice schedule simply because there's so many teams at so many different levels and so many different sports, all looking for access to that gym. Okay. Can we eat sitting next to our siblings or do we have to sit apart? So unfortunately we would have no way of knowing uh, who are the siblings. And so as long as you're seated with whoever six feet apart, um, we will have some, there's another question I see there that is about lunch tables. And we will have some lunch tables available on the uh, lunch harbor, but there will be one person per table. Will summer school programs, sports be available during the summertime? We do not know that at, at this time. In the Q&A, will there be substitutes for the teachers that are out? Yes, there will. Okay. Is the student store open? Can students buy Kearney hoodies or water, water bottles? At this time, the student store is not open. All right. I think we caught up. I don't see any new ones. Can students bring lunch from home? Absolutely. But please, again, um, you would need to be eating that before school, at the break, after school, and only if you are um, distanced from others. Um, at that time, you can take your mask down at be before school, during the break, and after school. Any thoughts about how to facilitate social interaction to make friends for the new students to San Diego slash Kearney? That is such a great question. Um, and it's and I have to be honest with you, it's going to be a little tricky because um, I don't think school's not going to look like it has um, in the past. Students will be coming into classrooms, as you saw in the video, 
where there are partitions and they will be seated separately from themselves. Um, there will not be the number of students that we typically have on campus. And so there will be an opportunity for them to interact a little bit more uh, during before school at the break, um, obviously following distancing guidelines. Um, but that's not something that we have completely thought out just because we wanna start with making sure everyone is safe. But I do appreciate the question because I, I think it's a very important one. And it's something that I, uh, I will be discussing with the administrators and with the ASB um, teacher so that we can really start to think about how we can facilitate that. If a student goes late to first period, can they still make it to second period? Can they still go to make it to second? Yes, they would need to, if they show up for second period, we will be allowing, because there will be students that don't even have a first period, they could show up for second period at the beginning and we could let them in for sure. If sports teams practice in the morning, uh, will they be able to go home and prepare for school between 8.20 and 8.30? The, um, that would probably only work if a student lives, you know, within very, very close distance to Kearney, um, such as right across the street or just on the other side of Mesa College Drive. Um, in our experience for students who have morning sports practice, the vast majority of those students don't live close enough to be able to go home and then get ready. They'll probably be staying on campus um, and entering when the gates are open around 820. What discipline measures will be taken if a student refuses to wear a mask? That is a wonderful question. So students who are not complying with the mask requirement will be sent home. We will be contacting parents and we will send them home to learn online because they can't be um, compromising the safety of others. Okay. You're welcome. I think that we have reached the end of our webinar. We want to thank everyone involved. Thank you, parents and students, for being here. Um, we will make this available um, on our website or via email so that you can rewatch it, as well as we'll send out the slide presentation so that you can see some of those links. Thank you to Ms. Riggins for um, your work as an interpreter translator, one of the very, very best in the district. Um, super positive. And speaking of super positive, we are really looking forward to a great start to the school year with um, you and your students next week um, as we move into a new phase of hybrid learning. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, Principal Diaz, any final words? No, I'm just super excited. Thank you so much and can't wait to see your children at school. Take care, everybody. Thank you.